Hi, I'm Eugene. You may know me by what I do in math, but I've got some big stories I want to share, like the wacky world of puzzle hunts. And this one is on a league of its own with a sheer scale and scope, so I'm going all out to tell my story in the world's biggest puzzle hunt series in... Top 20 Puzzles I Did in the MIT Mystery Hunt 2022! My adventure began when the Star Rats came to MIT and eked out in Haydn Library. Right when the Institute for the Acquisition and Study of Hyperintelligent Creatures was set to investigate, a giant hole swallowed Haydn Library, and now books are flying around in a whirlwind. My investigation is on a team in which I don't even know who half my teammates even look like. Actually, I only really know two other people there. Still, I'm ready to turn the page to some puzzles. And my first chapter has some nostalgia. After some teammates did some first investigations, we suddenly found our way into the very hole and tumbled into book space, a world where literature comes to life. We met some ministers at the Ministry of Intertextual Transportation, who are trying to find out what happened with all of those children's books, which are also the site of all sorts of puzzles, like my 20th place pick of The Last Olympian, based on the goaded Percy Jackson series. I mostly worked on the clue solving, but some teammates found some thematic connections with not only Greek gods, but also Olympic sports. Then making my way with my 19th place pick of Make Way for Ducklings. With ducks and clues out of order, we need to reform them before getting answers, and connections with the canonical ducks that indicate what word to extract. There's my 18th place pick of The Hobbit. I've enjoyed reading Lord of the Rings a while back, but now we're reading clues to a crossword and filling rings with clue answers. And some extra letters, of course. Not to mention my 17th place pick of Kid Startup. We got all those merger logos and need to figure out which of those companies got Fusion Hot. But that setup where the three companies share a letter was clever. No doubt a lot going on as we aim to extract an answer word or phrase for every puzzle. It's a good thing there are teammates keeping up. After all, there are a lot of niche topics and difficult extractions. Then we can get to the bottom of this. After we solved a lot of book puzzles, we reached the ministries and the meta puzzles, which use the puzzle answers themselves to get information on what happened. But there are five ministers, each needing different theater answers that we need to help. One such minister is Danny Dewey, whose meta puzzle is my 16th place pick as one I was most familiar with of all the ministers. With economics running around, we need to find five theaters that have a substring that form a currency when anagram. After picking out letters, we found Danny Dewey was looking for a colorful head. We also got other finds from other ministers, which accumulates with the ministry Meta Meta, my 15th place pick. We're not only taking the meta finds as indicators for all the theater answers, but also the mural in the actual high end library for ordering. After all, this is the MIT Mystery Hunt. And thanks to binary conversion, we find that a voracious bookworm ran amok. I'm really impressed on how the puzzle fit five conditions in conjunction with all the individual meta mechanics as a fairly tight setup. Once we've found the target, can stop the rampage with a new berry and a free around and save book space from further destruction. But not without tougher puzzles and metas after! With book space saved, it's time to head home. We have met Talk, who showed us a way back, which had been destroyed by the bookworm. At least a plot device restores damage, but that also had been destroyed by the bookworm. So we're heading to Penn Station to get components to repair the plot device from 10 different areas of book space. Like Haltuna, filled with how-tos like, well, how to find a component, the meta that stood out to me as my 14th place pick. We're using nuts, bolts, and alphabetization to assemble a Ken Ken logic puzzle, which is like Sudoku but with math operation. However, each part of the Ken Ken requires solving a theater answer. Nevertheless, it was impressive to see teammates back solve a bunch of puzzles from that round, getting puzzles answers and grid info without doing the theater puzzles themselves. But for most other components, we're gonna need to talk a lot more about those theaters to deal with the respective metas. And these fears are worth chowing down on. We're cooking up answers at Recipe Oreo with some puzzle recipes, and here's my three favorites from the menu. So I'm starting off with a bang with my 13th place puzzle, boom, shaka shaka. These numbers represent either mines in Minesweeper or areas for shaka shaka, but on the same cake, we need to pick out what rule set for each number. These logical deductions with two logic puzzles took so long to do even as a team, and even after that, extracting the area was hard to figure out. And things are firing up in my 12th place pick of Hell's Kitchen. Knowing Gordon Ramsay, we need to exercise those demons by taking answers, chopping them, and reforming them to parts of their name, most of the time. I got tripped up with a Biblical and Christianity classification, especially since I was expecting Beelzebub to show up. Even then, solving this with teammates was very fun. But my favorite recipe Oreo puzzle and 11th place pick was Ice Cream Roll, 
We're working with three layers and a weaving for all these clues. The challenge is that the pink and tan clues have no clue lengths given and the path clues are out of order. But as usual, teamwork is nice. And once that's done, a teammate later found some mixed up ice cream flavor with a letter missing. We're now touching down the top 10. Our first down in the top 10 is in New U City with the 49ers. Rather than the football team, we're working with seven diagramless crosswords, as if we don't have enough crosswords already. However, all clues for all crosswords are in one list, so the big task is to sort them all out. But in a team, there are so many ways to contribute, and it is even easier once the grid shapes are found with via those diagramless crossword rules like maintaining rotational symmetry. Additionally, the one across crews have the first letter spell Malaika, but the one down clues use the last letters to spell 7x words. Well, that took a while to find, but it did lead us to an established series of 7x7 crosswords that we can layer and make use of. Next up is another snap in New Year City! My ninth place pick has a lot of composition in this new app of Lentilgram, but the most exciting part is seeing new Pokemon Snap Incorporated. I've played it before and really enjoyed it! Still, there's more to capture than the Pokemon. First, there's the classic clue phrases, but some letters are used in order to complete a word. But we need to take some of the words to make a caption for each Lentilgram post. These posts have likes and star reviews as indices, but it took us a while to see that these aren't for the captions but rather the in-game Lentalk requests. And with so many indices, the answer phrase was actually a very long instruction. Hold it! Reference Point is bound to have plenty of references, including one for Ace Attorney in my 8th place pick, You Took the 5th. Phoenix Wright is more well known for his extensive debates, but this time he and Mia are building up the wordplay. The tricky part is that is a secret indicator to insert something into a string and is a secret indicator to remove something from a string. We eventually got a phrase that clues a Latin term used by lawyers, but the most clever part of the puzzle is the double meaning in the extraction. Normally, taking the fifth riffs on the Fifth Amendment, which covers the right to remain silent. However, in this context, it's an index instruction, taking the fifth letter of the Latin phrase. Now arriving at the scene of logic puzzles! Of course Mystery Hunt is going to have some mysteries to solve, like in New Orleans and Book Space. My favorite case to crack there and overall 7th favorite is Dancing Triangles. We're looking at a lot of logic puzzles, but this time on a triangular grid. But the sheer number allows us to divide and conquer. I did the nonogram and corral. The corral worked very similar to its classic counterpart, and the reflection mechanics of the nonogram are easy to comprehend. Still, working the logic was incredibly challenging! But the real difficulty of the puzzle is that there is a lot of information to track afterward. There is shape assembly, binary based on the results of each logic puzzle, and binary again with the triangles themselves to sound out. And this scale is starting to ramp up! We're now headed to the quest coast with a humongous crossword, my 6th place pick of Curious Customs, but we're not just looking at any old crossword clues here. These are cryptic crossword clues, where the definition is mixed with the wordplay. Fortunately, this dual use provides extra confirmation for some answers, but this cryptic crossword composites some clues into one long phrase, requiring us to not only parse out the clue separation, but the answer location. Speaking of placement, this crossword stitches together into an infinite crossword that cycles periodically! So when I said humongous crossword, I really mean it! I'm really impressed with just how much is going on including the secret mirrors used to get Braille letters at the end. And we're continuing on with the sheer scale! Although much of how Tuna was back solved, we still had regular feeder puzzles how-tos, the most notable in 5th place pick of having it all. I'm referring to the pangrams, sentences having every letter from A to Z at least once. Only, we have to take those gigantic batches of words to form them ourselves based on what was listed, and be mindful of the one extra part. The concept of the puzzle is relatively simple, making the real challenge of handling the scale of 26 pangrams made from over 250 words! But with a lot of teammates on our side, we can divide and conquer to form the sentences fairly efficiently. And we're really tracking places here. There's no surprise that we travel through many realms and genres of book space, and some of the puzzles just straight up invoke that. I mean, once upon a time in the quest coast, we took a look at glyphs that refer to past realms found in the investigation and ministry. But I really want to focus on one such realm, Dinotopia, my 4th place pick and favorite for the Ministry. This puzzle makes use of the Dinotopia alphabet, which notably has many repeated symbols. Sure enough, that's one of the challenges to parsing letters from the tracks, along with a good number of the symbols replaced by the Dinotopia question mark. But the moment a teammate found that these tracks represent fictional dinosaurs, I had a sense of direction to logic my way through the letters, finding pairs that look like they can make sense. The most satisfying track that I was able to parse was the Yoshi one. I like solving puzzles that turn out to involve stories that hit home with me. Eventually, we, we were able to form another string, as well as one for Quest Coast, to parse. 
About time I did puzzles with someone I know. Even with the sheer number of puzzles to solve to get the components, we were able to make light work with many hands. But the challenge of not knowing who many of my teammates are remained. But in Houston of all places, unlike most other puzzles, I actually have a personal connection with one of the teammates poking around within the times they had. Yup, our prior experiences were a big reason why this puzzle landed as high as third place. But let's not forget the Scrabble mechanics too. Remember having it all with the panagrams? Well, we're not just using 26 letters, but all 100 Scrabble tiles, including two blank tiles that we had to do for a sentence. And not only that, but we have to find out how the Scrabble scores are calculated from the series of stacked tiles that are multiplied out, using our math skills from another league as we playtest the scores and make edits to deduce the blanks. And we use all this information to figure out how and in what order we assemble these series of stacks like a word in classic Scrabble. But we're not done yet! We then make use of the blanks to get a message involved using a single word from each sentence. Woo! No doubt a lot involved, but the times we had in the calculations were the main highlight. We're getting close to the end! After so many puzzles and metas, we finally got all the components needed to repair the plot device. Helps that some teammates were able to anticipate the shape. Now with the toll booth restored, we can finally use that to go home! Only one problem. The toll booth is for characters of book space and thus requires a specific currency. But our time in book space has created a story, so we're now completing the story with my second place pick. First, we need to find the pages, each hidden in some book within Bookspace that is one letter off of some literary classic. I like what they did with the Divine Comedy and the Secret Life of Bees. But these pages were incomplete. We have to work the printer delivery by inserting a feeder answer word into the page. And then we have to order those pages and index them based on those decorations. It's all hands on deck in the end game, much like those awesome Avengers moments where everyone teams up for one big challenge. Especially as we're running out of time! And with just minutes to spare, we found a way home. Book Passage Home with Litcoin! That clutch is easily one of the big highlights, and I even got to see who some of my teammates look like. All's well that ends well, eh? But I still have one more puzzle to talk about. Before my top pick, some honorable mentions! And oh boy, we're gonna be here for a while. No way I can exhaust everything considered special. So comment below your favorite puzzles and moments. As for me, Crooked Crossing. It's a Hashiwoka Karo logic puzzle, but with wraparound. List of large integers. Love the concept of prime factorization, but with clues. On second thought, we not only get clues, but also fundraising calculations. And let's not forget the metas. Many of the cool parts are brought up in the good old wrap-up. Here's my standouts. Fruit around. It's when I learned the bookworm was the very hungry caterpillar. Once upon a time in the quest. It's interesting that some teammates knew there may be a revisitation puzzle. Introspection. It's unique for every team, and I really mean it. Personal connections, a challenging sneaky use of birthdays, and battery pack. Also interesting on how we got the shape idea so early that we're waiting on the other metas for submission. Alright, here's my top pick. There's a lot to appreciate from a great puzzle hunt experience. Interesting mechanics, exhilarating collaboration, and the friends along the way. And one other puzzle exemplifies that so well. The Dingbats of Lake Erie. First things first, this is a massive grid filled with a lot of pictures and a lot of clues. So naturally, there's a lot to dig out. These pictures are words that can be pronounced together, word search style, to form an answer to the clues below, many of which are vague enough to require us to search. It was nice seeing Bobberman as the answer to one of the clues, but then one teammate found out that another one of the clues solves in Nirakabe. This prompted us to combine our word searching skills with the Nirakabe solving skills to identify islands, and these islands also have the pronunciation gimmick, but this time as a clue for an island. One example that stood out was Master Emerald representing Angel Island. Looking back, with my friend and many teammates on deck with so many ways to contribute, even more so from the chain ahas that feel so satisfying to discover, hunt puzzles like these dingbats can really exemplify the sheer power of teamwork. And that wraps up my adventure at Bookspace for the MIT Mystery Hunt. With coin fighting leading to hunt hosting, there's a lot of effort put onto hundreds of puzzles on a massive scale. Especially with the sheer number of crosswords and word puzzles. Shouldn't be surprising due to the book theming. Even in a team where I didn't know who half my teammates even look like, having a connection with just one hunter is more than enough to make the puzzle solving experience really shine. Possibly more than the puzzle mechanics themselves. These connections can make a big part on why many hunters consider those puzzle stories so special, even if I cannot see them. Special thanks to the folks at Palindrome for publishing the puzzles, and for viewers like you, thank you! And I can finally say it! The end!